Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, and we apologize for any delay this evening, but we will right now get into our program, which is the debate night. Is Muhammad a true prophet, or is he an antichrist? For Muslims, the question of Muhammad's true prophethood is indisputable. They firmly believe he is a true prophet and messenger of God, through whom God's divine revelations through history were perfected. For critics of Islam, is it Muhammad rather than God, who is the founder of Islam? and the author of its teachings. Critics of Islam de deny the Muslim belief that Muhammad is a prophet of God. Welcome to Debate Night. We are here live in ABM studio, and we have an, an exciting debate for you this evening. Again, the topic of tonight's debate, is Muhammad a true prophet, or is he an antichrist? I'm Chris Conway, your moderator this evening. I'm honored to introduce to you our two debaters of the evening. First, we have Christian apologist Sam Shamoon. Mr. Shamoon was born in Kuwait to an Iraqi Assyrian Christian family. Uh, Sam moved to the United States with his family at an early age. His family belonged to the Church of the East, also known as the Nestorian Church. Years later, Shamoon's faith often came under fire. His Christian beliefs were frequently challenged by those who maintained Islam as the one true religion. From these unsettling encounters, he began to dig deeply into the basics of the Christian faith. He confessed, but wanted to know more about. After a thorough and critical examination of the scriptures, his ability to share the gospel and his capacity to, to answer skeptics' questions, specifically Muslims' objections, increased dramatically. Also joining us live from Pakistan is Mr. Unamullah Muntaz. Mr. Muntaz was born in Pakistan, Lahore, lived in Saudi Arabia until the age of 20 after which he traveled to the U.S. for higher studies and spent th uh, three years there. He's now a comparative student and has been involved in several debates, including one with Antonio Santana. He also lectures in comparative studies to different students. He's also an Islamic operator, or I'm sorry, orator. Mr. Mumtaz is the president and founder of the Quranic Dawa Center International in Lahore, Pakistan. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us this evening. Uh, if you can hear me, can you, can you say uh, hello? Uh, you talking to me, brother? Yes, brother. All right. Well, yeah. Sorry for all the technical difficulties. Oh, but no. I'm we not working on my computer, and I we, have to be on the phone. We apologize. We apologize, Sam. And good to hear your voice, and uh, we'll carry on. We'll make it happen. In Jesus' and, uh, almighty name, by the grace, the power, the blood, the authority of Jesus. Amen. We will hear from each of the speakers, and... Uh, with opening statements, rebuttals, cross-examinations, and closing statements. I'll notify each of the speakers that there are, when there are 30 seconds left on the clock, you'll hear a chime sound, and that'll indicate to you that you have 30 seconds depending on the format. We'll walk everyone through this. We will then conclude the formal, uh, formal part of the, of, the, of the debate and then open the phone lines for you, the audience, to call in. We actually might have to uh, shorten that a little bit because of our late start tonight. The studio number for those who will be calling in is 248-416-1300. Again, that's 248 248- 416-1300. Again, the question for tonight's debate is, is Muhammad a true prophet or is he an antichrist? At this time, I'd like to turn it over to you, Inamula, for your opening statement. You have six minutes. Hatu Burhanukum in Kuntum Sadatin, Kala Bishrahli Sadri, Vayasili Amri, Wahlul Ukdatam Milisani Yafkau Koli. Respected moderator, Brother Sam, and my listeners and the viewers, the ayah I have read from the Quran is actually from Surah Al Baqarah, chapter 2, verse triple, when it says that Jews and the Christians said, You Muslim will never, never be entered into Jannah. There is no heaven and salvation for you. Allah says to that, Tell them. That is their wishful desires, and tell them that bring your proof if you are truthful. The subject which has been instigated by Brother Sam is that Muhammad being an antichrist or a true prophet. 1.8 
billion Muslims in totality per se, we believe that Prophet Muhammad sallam, from the mouth from God Almighty that Jesus Christ is Messiah. Masi, Hebrew word Messiah means Christ, which means the anointed one. Now let us see, this time is very premium. Let me direct, uh, jump directly to the subject. I'm going to quote Brother Sam. I'm going to quote 1 John chapter 2 verse 18. Where John, John is only the writer in the entire Bible which is mentioning about the Antichrist. The Antichrist, Antichrist means person who opposes Jesus, who denies the Christship of Jesus, not the Godship of Jesus, Christship of Jesus, and who denies the second coming of Jesus Christ. The test which is given according to your scripture. I don't want to philosophize over there and over there and getting out sidetracks. John says, John says, little children, it is the last time. And as he heard that Antichrist shall come. This John is telling to the children that Antichrist will appear on before the day of judgment. And there is another Antichrist already which are in the world. Now he gives us the test. He said that who is the liar and the Antichrist in 1 John chapter 2 verse 22. 1 epistle of John chapter 2 verse 22. He said out clearly and ambiguously and tersely. He said who is the liar that he denieth Christ, ship of Jesus Christ, that he denied, denied Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist. This is the test then he gave. Then after that in 1 John chapter 2 verse 23, further on it continues, whosoever denied the son, son means prophet in the Hebrew idiom, son, the son of God in the Bible, he was referring to the righteous or the pious people, the same help not the father. Father is the synonym for God. Elohim or Jehovah, whatever you want to say. Father is God. So obviously Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu believed in Jesus and God Almighty. Then, first epistle of John, chapter 4, verse number 1. It says, Beloved, do not believe in every spirit, but try to believe the spirit, whether they are of God. Now, the true spirit is a true prophet, not something pneuma in a Greek, which is Holy Spirit, as the Holy Ghost. He's telling about the prophet. True spirit is a true prophet. And the false spirit is the false prophet. The spirit which confesses that the Jesus is the Christ of God. Is the right spirit. And the spirit which denies is the spirit of Antichrist. The only non-Christian faith after this verse or after this faith, Christianity, only Prophet Muhammad Wasallam told in the Holy Quran that Jesus is Christ. And we absolutely believe no Muslim is a Muslim if he rejects that idea. Then in 2 John chapter 1 verse number 7 says, For many deceivers are entered into the world. The deceivers who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. In the flesh. This is the deceiver and the antichrist. What we Muslim say? The Muslim believe that Jesus came into the flesh. In Surah Al Imran chapter 3 verse 45. Behold, and the angel said, O Mary, That God Almighty has given you a glad tiding of a word from Him. Not God, but from Him. It is Godly. His name shall be Christ. John is telling anyone who confesses that Jesus is Christ and came into the flesh. Not something like God, which is John 1, 1 says. This is not the subject. Anyhow, the, the, the word is from God. Ismuhul Masih, his name shall be Christ. Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus, the son of Mary. Wajihan fi dunya wal akhira. Held in honor in this world and the hereafter. Wa min al muqarrabin And he shall be nearest in the company of God. This is the behavior and the standard of the Holy Quran. Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse 45. Now, the false prophets. Let us discuss about the false prophets too, as it some have a connotation to it, to the subject. I cleared the Antichrist verse, only his verses are only to be found through the epistles of John. Only John's, John talks about that. Not false Christ, Antichrist. Antichrist. So the Matthew says that 24-24, Matthew says that in 24-24, that and then they shall rise, Jesus is saying, in Matthew chapter 24, and they shall arise many false Christ and the false prophet, even to show many signs and the wonders. 
Now, which wonders and signs did Prophet Muhammad Sallam show at his time? No signs. He says in chapter 20, Surah Taha, verse number 11, the signs are in the hands of God. I am not a miracle worker. So, about Una Matt, uh, Jesus is saying. Okay. Unamula, thank you very much. Your uh, time is up. Uh, uh, kind of getting uh, acclimated here because of a late start. But again, the chime sound will be 30 seconds. At the, and that'll, you have 30 seconds to finish. Okay, at this point, we're going to restart the clock and we will have. Uh, Brother Sam Shamoon, start, and we are ready to go. Six minutes, you're all set. Go ahead, Sam. All right. I want to begin by praising the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, begging the Father of our Lord Jesus to enable me to glorify his Son and the power of the Holy Spirit by exposing Muhammad, the false prophet. In fact, uh, our, my opponent actually did it for me. He actually proved that Muhammad is the Antichrist, but in his zeal he couldn't see it. I want the audience to remember what he quoted. He quoted 1 John chapter 2, verse 23, and that was one of the passages I was actually going to use to prove Muhammad is an antichrist. Before I quote it, I just want to make this clear to the audience. Notice he appealed to the Bible. If the Bible is good enough to prove that Muhammad is a prophet, then by the same token, it's good enough to prove he's an antichrist, a false prophet. Therefore, any passage I quote to prove that Muhammad is a deceiver, my opponent cannot come back and say it's corrupt because he just appealed to the Bible to prove his case. So let me show you how he proved my case, and the debate is over by the grace of God. Notice he quoted 1 John 2, 23. Let me quote the con uh, context. 1 John chapter 2, verses 22 to 23, who is the liar? It is whoever denies that Jesus is the Christ. Such a person is the Antichrist, denying the Father and the Son. Now, he said something that was a lie, or let me just give him the benefit of doubt, was mistaken. He said Son means prophet. No, that doesn't mean that at all. In Mark chapter 12, verses 1 to 10, Jesus distinguishes himself from all the prophets by calling the prophets servants of God, but then identifying himself as the beloved son. So from the lips of Jesus, a son is not the same as a prophet, you are mistaken. However, 1 John 2.22 proves Muhammad is an antichrist. Why? Notice again who an antichrist is. Whoever denies the father and the son. According to the following Quranic passages, for the sake of time I'll just mention them. Chapter 5, verse 18 of the Quran. Chapter 5, verse 18. Chapter 6, verse 101. Chapter 6, verse 101. Chapter 9, verse 30. Chapter 9, verse 30. And chapter 19 of the Quran, verses 88 to 93, say, Allah is the Father to no one. He is not the Father, and Jesus is in His Son. Lo and behold, my opponent just proved his prophet is the Antichrist, and the Quran is the book of the Antichrist, inspired by the Spirit of the Antichrist. Thank you for giving me the debate. Let me repeat the criterion again. Such a person is the Antichrist, denying the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Now, he made another mistake. He said Islam is the only non-Christian faith that confirms Jesus is the Christ. That, too, is a lie. The Baha'i faith, the Baha'i faith, affirms that Jesus is the Messiah and that Muhammad is a prophet, and yet the Baha'is do not consider themselves Muslims or a sect of Islam. So you're mistaken. You're passing misinformation. Again, I'm going to give you the benefit of doubt and assume you don't know what you're talking about, so you're speaking in ignorance, and the Lord show you mercy by delivering you out of Islam and bringing you to the feet of Jesus' his Son. Then he went on to quote 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 to 6, saying that <clears throat> the way you test the Spirit is to see whether the Spirit says, Christ has come in the flesh. And what's ironic about that? He doesn't understand the language, the terminology of John. For John to say that Christ has come in the flesh affirms the pre-human existence of Christ and the incarnation. Christ coming in the flesh means that at some point in time Christ exists before he was flesh and then became flesh, John 1.14. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the one and only, of the Father, full of grace and truth. Islam does not affirm that Christ existed before he became flesh, and he did not exist as the Word of God before he became flesh. Therefore, according to this passage, Muhammad is a liar, a deceiver, an antichrist. But what's ironic, he didn't quote verses 7 to 14. He didn't finish the context, which further shows that Muhammad is an antichrist. Let me read 7 to 14. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. The same First John that says, this is how you test the spirits, goes on to say, 
that God loved us enough to send his son, who? Jesus Christ, to save us. In fact, 1 John 4, 14 says, we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his son to be the Savior of the world. Again, according to the Quran, God is not the Father, Jesus is not his son. So according to the very context of the very passages that my opponent quoted, his prophet is an antichrist, a deceiver, an enemy of Jesus. But then he gets even worse. <clears throat> he quotes 2 John 1, 7. And again, as is his habit, he doesn't quote the context. 2 John 1, 7 again, which says that the deceiver is the one who denies that Christ has come in the flesh. But wait, why didn't he read 2 John chapter 1, verse 3? Here's what 2 John chapter 1, verse 3 says. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and from Jesus Christ the Father's Son. Lo and behold, here's another passage that affirms God is the Father and Christ is the Son, which Muhammad denied. So all the passages that my opponent quoted come back to refute him and expose Muhammad as an antichrist, a false prophet. Thank you for giving me the debate. However, I think I have a few more minutes. There's another criterion that you can use to determine that Muhammad is a false prophet. According to Jesus Christ, in Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 to 16 and verse 20, Matthew 7, verses 15 to 16 and verse 20, he says, you will know a false prophet by his fruit. He will have rotten, stinking, filthy fruit. Hey, uh, pa Sam, Sam, okay, we, we're at the end of the six minutes, but thank you. Uh, we're going to, I'm just going to keep moving here. We, we do have now an opportunity for uh, Inamula to respond. Inamula, you have five minutes. We'll reset the clock, and you can. You have a five-minute uh, rebuttal. You can start right now. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Let me correct Brother Sam. He says that Father, that Muhammad denies Father. What about in the Old Testament, Brother? What is the God's name in the Old Testament? Father? What Moses called God? Elohim, Jehovah, or Father? Now, you better tell to your people what that Moses is calling in God in the entire gospel. Now, you introduce the word father in the New Testament. So, who is father? My brother will tell. And he is telling about son and the father. Read your Bible. Luke chapter 3, last verse, verse 38. Adam, the son of God. So, what was Adam? What is David? David is a son. And book of Romans 3.14, what does it say? My brother knows the verse already. That as many as led the spirit of, of, by the spirit of God are the sons of God. Now the righteous people are called sons of God in the Bible. You're on the Bible and I use the word pious too. I did not only use the word what you are telling me, I used pious word too in the explanation of the previous verses. Then you said Baha'ism. I don't know you know what is Baha'ism. Baha'ism, the cult later came after the Islam. It is a part of the Islam, it is a cult, not before Islam, not before Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. I think so, you hope you understand. There's nothing about Baha'ism in it. So you have to believe and you have to accept that, that only Islam was the faith which said that openly that Jesus is Christ. And John has given you the test of Christ. Don't call me false prophet about all things you are telling me. And in Matthew chapter 24, verse 24, it continues. I did not, uh, didn't see the time, so I just missed out the point. Matthew and Jesus says that by the fruit ye shall know them. Know them. Do men gather grapes from the thorns and the figs from the thistles? Now, what are, how do you can judge the nation? By their fruits. Tell me how many Muslims in the world they are buy, um, buying the alcohol, buying the alcohol. How many Muslims? The lowest alcoholic rate is in Islam. You have to accept. According to the statistics, the lowest crime rate is in Islam. Don't tell me about media, what media is telling you. Tell me about physically. Have you seen any witness which is doing these things? No. The total teetotalers are Islam. The lowest alcoholic rate, gambling rate in Islam. Jesus says, by the fruits you shall know them. Then he uh, continues it in the, in the later chapters. He says, the kingdom of God will be taken away from, the, from your hand and will be given to the nations, bringing forth the fruits thereof. What fruits? What fruits did Christianity produce for 2011 years? My brother Sam will tell, explain me when his time will come. Then he got it in Surah Tawbah, chapter 9, verse 30 about Uzair and about being called the son. When the Quran says son, it, it means the begotten son which you had in John 3.16, which the word was taken out. Tell to the people what was the Greek word there. Why in the King James Version word is there begotten and in the RSV the words are taken out. The begotten word was taken out. Why is it? If you are telling the son is the same son, which is uh, John is telling in the letters, 
to the people that son means that the son of the god like which you quoted john 1 1 and the john chapter 1 verse 13 and 14 that it became the flesh brother how did you come to the world wasn't you the world before came read jeremiah chapter 1 verse number 15 god says jeremiah i knew you before you came into the world in what form uh, prophet uh, god is telling to jeremiah what form i am i would i want to ask from you what form so the thing is that you are telling me that i don't know what is the sun and i'm ignorant brother sam don't tell me i'm ignorant you tell to the people what was the name for god retained in the previous scripture do they call them father jews call them father or what so the thing which your father you are making father relationship with god is some special extra particular way this is not the case so son is the simply word where john is telling you and christ come to the christ tell me where quran denies that jesus is not christ quote me the verse from the quran and tell me where quran prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam denies the christship of jesus christ where he denies that he was uh, born without any sexual union tell me these things that he did not perform any miracles which goes against the grain of christianity not on something god or something making him god because god you know that in 325 AD, democratically by the show of hands, he was anointed as a god. How many times I have uh, I got Mr. Moderator? So the thing is this: you tell you the people, give me the word in the Old Testament used for God. Thank you very much. A little ahead of schedule. That's okay since we got a late start. Okay, so. Thank you, uh, Inamula, and now we will reset the clock for Sam. And Sam, if you're ready, you can start right now. May the Lord Jesus Christ be glorified and exalted. Uh, he told me, what is the name of God in the Old Testament? Well, his name is Yahweh, so I'm going to challenge him. Show me where the word Yahweh, the name of God in the Old Testament, appears in the Quran. Muhammad was ignorant of the name. Secondly, he said that in the Old Testament, the Israelites didn't know Yahweh or God as Father. Well, then again, that either shows he doesn't know the Old Testament or he's being deceptive. Let me quote for uh, several verses where the Bible says specifically Yahweh is the Father of Israel. Isaiah 63, verse 16. But you are our Father, though Abraham does not know us or Israel acknowledge us. You, Yahweh, are our Father. Our Redeemer from of old is your name. So the Old Testament, in agreement with the New Testament, acknowledges. Yahweh God is a father to his people spiritually, not physically, sexually, like Muhammad erroneously thought, further proving Muhammad is a false prophet. So thank you again for giving me the debate. But let me look at two more references from the Old Testament to show you how the Old Testament agrees with the New Testament that God is a father, which your prophet said he wasn't. Therefore, he's a false prophet and antichrist. Isaiah 64, verse 8. Yet you, Yahweh, are our father. We are the clay, you are the potter, we are all the work of your hand. And finally, Malachi chapter 2, verse 10. Do we not all have one Father? Did not one God create us? Did you catch it? Do we not all have one Father who's the one God who created us? Then he mentioned, well, you know what, Jesus, Son of God, but so is Adam. Thank you again for proving that Muhammad is a false prophet. Notice what you're saying. You're not even paying attention to your own arguments. You're saying Adam is the Son of God, but your prophet is saying no one is the Son of Allah. Allah has no sons. Adam's not his son. Jesus is not his son. Israel are not his sons. But you just quoted a verse from the Bible saying Adam is his son. Well, then again, if Adam is his son, then Muhammad is wrong again. That means Muhammad's God is not the God of the Bible, who is a father to his people spiritually, a father to Adam, a father to Christ, a father to Israel. Muhammad's a God is a father to no one. So again, thank you for proving your God is a false God, and Muhammad is the Antichrist, according to the very Bible you've been quoting to prove otherwise. So you keep giving me the debate, glory to Jesus Christ. Then you quote Romans chapter 8, verses 14 to 16. Again, this astonishes me that you would quote this passage, because once again it demonstrates that Muhammad is a false prophet and Antichrist. Why do I say that? Well, let me read 14 to 16. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. I want the audience to remember... Muhammad says Allah has no children. This gentleman just quoted Romans 8:14, which says that those who have the Spirit of God are the children of God. Therefore, if he is right in quoting this New Testament passage, then Muhammad is wrong. So thank you for proving that Muhammad is wrong. But you're supposed to prove he's right. You're not supposed to 
fight on my side and give me the debate, you're supposed to refute me. So far, you're refuting Muhammad and proving he's an antichrist. Thank you, but I didn't need the help. I got the grace of Jesus Christ. But let's just read a couple of verses earlier, which he did not mention, to prove that although we are children by the grace of God, Jesus is the Son of God in a unique sense. Let's read Romans 8, verses 9 to 10. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. If anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, did you catch it? The Spirit of God is the Spirit of Christ. They do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, wow! The verses before 14 to 17 says, to have the Spirit of God is to have the Spirit of Christ. And to have the Spirit of Christ living in you is to have Christ living in you. The reason why I can be a child of God is because the Spirit of Christ, the Son of God, lives in me, making me a child of God by grace through adoption. So Romans chapter 8 again proves that Muhammad is a false prophet and antichrist. He stands condemned by the Holy Bible, the very book that you appeal to. Then he said that Baha'ism is a cult of Islam. I beg to differ. Ask any Baha'i and they will deny that. They will deny that Baha'ism is a cult of Islam. But however, let me grant that argument to you. I guess my opponent is not aware that early in Christian history, Islam was being identified as a cult of Christianity. For example, John of Damascus, John the Damascene, writing in the 8th century, in the 700s, in Damascus, Syria, identified Islam as an Aryan Christian cult. So according to your own criterion, Islam is not a non-Christian religion. It's a Christian cult that perverts the gospel of Jesus Christ. So again, you stand refuted. Then you talk about the fruits of Islam. You talk about alcoholism. It is interesting you don't talk about the evil fruits of Islam. For example, are you aware that according Sam, to the Quran, chapter 4, verse 1... Sam, I'm, I'm, okay, we're gonna, I'm, I know, hey, it's really tough to do this because I know we're always in the middle of our, an energetic, uh, passionate debate, but we will need to go to a break real soon here. A few announcements before we do that. The Aramaic, Re, Aramaic revolve, Revival with Dr. Estafanos Isan Thursday and Friday, uh, May 19th and 20th at 8 p.m. in Warren Community Church. That's next weekend. Uh, that is 28100 Ryan Warren in Warren, Michigan, for those locally in this uh, Detroit metro community. Also, Detroit for Christ Revival with Father Makar Yunan on Thursday and uh, Saturday and Sunday. That would be uh, in June, the 17th, 18th, and 19th. And actually, I'm sorry, 16th, 18th, 19th of June. And that's uh, at Zion Christian Church on Livernois in Troy. That's at 8 o'clock each of those evenings. And lastly, uh, also in June, we will be having a Jesus or Muhammad marathon from June 13th to June 20th. I suspect we'll have uh, Sam uh, Shamoon on that uh, on that uh, uh, get on that show as well, as well as as with other guests, as many as 21 in, to in total, will be either uh, on the studio or through Skype. We're going to take a quick 90 second break here. We'll be right back with debate night. So stay with us and be and be sure to to call in and get ready to call in at 248-416-1300 on this program tonight, again, Debate Night. We'll be right back. like to support ABN's ministry, you can give us a call at 248-416-1300 or you can visit our website at www.abnsat.com. ABN appreciates your support and donations.
Okay, welcome back. Thanks for staying uh, in touch with us here on Debate Night. Again, the topic is Muhammad, a true prophet or an antichrist. We're going to get into the second segment here. Uh, we're going to start out each of the uh, debaters tonight, the Muslim starting first and then the non-Muslim. We'll go into a five-minute rebuttal. This is rebuttal number two, so each of them will have five minutes to, re to make a rebuttal. And then we're going to go into a cross-examination portion, the first time we've ever done this on this program. And what will happen is the, we'll start with the non-Muslim. Uh, Sam will ask the Muslim a question, and then the, the uh, Muslim uh, in a mullah will have an opportunity, two minutes, to answer this question. So we're, we're, we're going to encourage each, each of you to ask a short question. Then we'll start the clock at two minutes. And then, again, we'll give you the 30 seconds uh, when, uh, just before the 30 seconds is over. Or the minute, two minutes is over at 30 seconds, we'll actually uh, make that chime sound again. So we're going to start this. We'll move through this. So at this point, uh, Inamula, uh, you have five minutes. You can go ahead and start talking right now. Yes. Uh, Brother Sam, do not uh, blow your own trumpet in proving the case that you proved that Muhammad is the Antichrist. I said that the thing which Allah says in the Quran is the begotten, which you miss out. Tell me in John 3.16 why the word begotten was taken out. Because begotten was not to be found in the original. The word is there, monogenes. Mono means one, genes, genesis means beginning. So the word think that, that this word was not suitable to be thrown out. So on the entire basis, you are telling the thing which you are making out, it means that Adam must be the begotten son also. Every sons of God are the begotten sons of God in the Bible, according to your definition. Islam eschewed this word. You are an, an Arab, you know the word was for Allah in the Quran is Rabb, Rabb. But in the Arab, it, for the father is Abb. So in Islam, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu if you are saying that this is on his hand, his word, he missed out the word Abb. He chose the word Rabb. Why? Because there are some people who are making this thing, the sickness is creeping in their minds that God has sired a son, which you are believing in it. So if you are saying that Jesus is the, some special case, then that, spe that special case must be applied to everyone. And point is Antichrist. Prove me the Antichrist, not the Godship of Jesus. This is not that John is telling you about God, the Father and the Son relation. You said Yahuwah. What is Yahuwah? Word is Elohim to there. You quoted me about Isaiah 64, 8, about the father. So Isaiah, in Isaiah 64, 8, is a father. Then Jesus says his father, then he's referring to Elohim. No, not the father-son relationship, according to you. So, Elo, what is Jehovah? What is Jehovah? You tell me. Yah is the provocative exclamation mark. Hua, he, oh, he. You are an Arab, you know. Yah, hua means, oh, he. That's all. Oh, he, Elohim, not oh, he, father. Which you are telling me, father got some special reason with his son. Not that case. So this is what thing. In chapter 19 of Surah Maryam, verse 88, it says, وَقَالَ تَخَذَ الرَّحْمَانُ وَلَدَ And they said that God Almighty has begotten a son. The word is begotten, walad. لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُلَدْ He does not beget, nor he has begotten anyone. The issue is begotten, not the son. Son is the Hebrew idiom which was used for the righteous people, for the prophets, and for everyone. You're in your, in your Bible. The righteous people are sons of God. In Genesis 6, 4, in Jeremiah 31, 9, Ephraim is the son of God. What? Begotten son? No. In Exodus 3, chapter 3, verse 44, and David is the son of God. Today I have begotten thee. So what son of God is? Is it direct lineage to God? Adam, in Luke chapter 3, verse 28, son, 38, sorry, son of God. In what? Direct lineage to God? No. It is metaphorically, not Physically, when you say physically, then everyone must be the sons of God in a literal sense, which you are telling exception to Jesus. Why are you making exception to Jesus if only for this God that he doesn't have any father, then Adam has no father and no mother? Stand to reason on that. So you are begging the question and telling that, blowing your own trumpet, that I have won and I, I proved that Muhammad is Antichrist. You haven't proved nothing, my brother, because subject is Antichrist. Opposes to the Christ, tell me where Prophet Muhammad says that Jesus is not coming. And then you are again misquote, misquoted me about Baha'ism. You better check it again. And you are now still forcing Baha'ism. Then you said that the thing about Christianity, that the, uh, the Aryan cult you are telling about, it was the beginning of. Show me the proof. Give me proof. 
tell me where did you get that source tell to the people read that source and tell me where did you get that show me the reference of encyclopedia or anything which got some worth how about that tell to the people about this what you're telling me so i'm still stand by islam is only the faith which says and you're talking about the evil when you were cut off it was better you been cut off you're telling about the evil i said don't quote me media media is in your hands trilateral commission whatever you like you move it that's the what you media is doing don't tell me about media quote me about the muslim which you are living in the midst of you which muslim comes and threaten you if anyone threatens you you will not be over here in sitting and talking to me this is what our courtesy and latitude of the muslim so don't don't talk about this thing about evil and all stuff because if you talk about evil then read about the media nets what happened to media nets and moses gave sent his army why is it not the evil so moses is anti christ you tell me numbers chapter 31 what what happened over there so what about samson killed 500 palestinians was he an anti christ he is the hero in the bible samson and delilah in book of judges chapter 16 verse number 15 read over there okay so, thank you very much we have a uh, uh, five minutes are up now but and as we reset the clock just to, just to confirm we did because we had a late start tonight we will be going uh the extra 20 minutes or so so as long we're going to go through the whole format of the program past 9:30 just let everybody know that so that we'll give you an opportunity as we had planned originally to have everyone call if you'd like to again 2484161300 so get in you can actually start calling anytime even though we won't be going to the calls until after this next break which is coming up but before we do that we had a lot we have a lot more to go through and at this point our, the clock is reset so uh Sam if you're ready you can start talking right now May the Lord Jesus Christ be exalted by the powers of the Holy Spirit. Let me address the last point real quickly when I wanted to demonstrate some of the evil rotten fruit of Islam. He said don't quote me media, right? Quote me chapter and verse. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm not going to quote your rotten fruit. I'm going to quote the rotten fruit of Muhammad and his companions. Let me just give you an example of how rotten the fruit of Muhammad and his companions were. And these are commands he received from his God, who's not the God of the Bible. Chapter 4 verse 24 allows Muslim men not only to rape captive women that they have taken as booty in battle women that they've taken captive in in battle but they're also permitted to rape married captive women chapter 4 verse 24 also prohibited are women already married except those whom your right hands possess now notice this the quran says you shouldn't sleep with a married woman unless she's a captive so the quran says if you've taken a woman captive in war then rape her Now the Muslims say, well, it's not rape; it's his right, conjugal rights. Well, you can call it what you want. We'll call it for what it is. It is rape. I don't know of any sane woman that would want her captor to sleep with her and enjoy it after seeing her family killed by these thugs. So let me give you the uh, the hadith that explains the so-called reason for this so-called revelation. Sunan Abu Dawood, Volume Two, Number Twenty One Fifty. Uh, number 2150 Abu Said Al Khudri said the Prophet of Allah sent a military expedition to Autas on the occasion of the battle of Hunain they met their enemy and fought with them they defeated them and took them captives some of the companions of the Apostle of Allah were reluctant to have intercourse with the female captives in the presence of their husbands who were unbelievers see these muslim men felt the shame to rape these women when their husbands were alive so Allah the exalted set down Surah 424 saying go ahead and do it. This is the fruit I'm talking about. This rotten filthy fruit of Islam and Jesus says by your their fruits you will know them. Here's another rotten fruit because you keep asking me don't quote media, I won't. I'm going to quote Muhammad, the Quran <clears throat> and the Sunnah. Another rotten fruit of Muhammad. Are you aware that Muhammad actually <clears throat> allowed his his companions to contract what he called temporary marriages to find a woman, a local marry her for a short period of a uh, period of time give her a sum of money and tell her beforehand that he's going to marry her for let's say 3 days and divorce her in order to satisfy his sexual cravings today we call that prostitution but muhammad called it pleasure marriage zawaj al muta zawaj al muta let me read the hadith sahih bukhari volume 6 number 139 narrated abdullah we used to participate in the holy wars carried on uh, the prophet by the prophet and we had no woman no wives with us so he said to the prophet shall we castrate ourselves but the prophet forbade us to do that and thenceforth he allowed us to marry a woman temporarily 
by giving her even a garment, and then he recited chapter 5, verse 87. Do you see how rotten this fruit is? Muhammad, in the name of his God, prostitutes women, calling it temporary marriage. These are the rotten fruits that Jesus said, look for in order to know whether someone is a false prophet, and your prophet is a false prophet, according to the holy, pure teachings of Jesus Christ. Now, let's come back to the other questions that he raised. He kept trying to say that what the Quran actually denies is begotten in a sexual, procreative sense. It has no problem with someone being God's son in a metaphorical sense. Again, either my opponent is ignorant of the Quran or he's being deceptive. He's using taqiyya and khida, concealment and deception, which is God allows him to do. Because if he had read chapter 5, verse 18 carefully, Muhammad was against any type of sonship altogether, whether physical, sexual, or metaphorical. Here's the proof. Chapter 5, verse 18. Both the Jews and the Christians say, we are the sons of God and his beloved. I challenge my opponent to quote one source from the Jews and Christians at that time that were saying that we are the sexual byproduct, the physical offspring of God. They didn't believe that. They didn't believe God was a physical being who sired them physically, sexually, through a consort, having a goddess, so to speak, and having sex with them. They believed that sonship was purely spiritual, not sexual. So what does Muhammad say? Does he say, okay, if you think you're the children of Allah, and it's not in a sexual connotation, I'm fine with it. No, this is his response. Say, why then does he punish you for your sins? Nay, you are but men, men he has created. In other words... You are not his son in any sense, whether sexually, which we also condemn. God forbid that we say that God is a physical father to us, who had sex with a consort to Cyrus. That's blasphemy to us Christians, not just the Muslims. But okay. we also deny God's fatherhood spiritually Thank you, Sam. and metaphorically. Thank you, Therefore, Sam. Thank you, Sam. Okay. Now, at this point, we are going to get into the cross-examination. Uh, what we'll do is, uh, Sam, you will ask a question. It needs to be brief. And then at that point, we'll start the clock, and we have two minutes for, in this case, we start out, Inumula will have two minutes to respond. So if you're ready with your questions, Sam, go ahead right now, and then we'll start the clock at two minutes when, when uh, Inumula starts, okay. responds. Let me know. Right now, go? go ahead and ask the question. Okay, this question is to my opponent. Uh, it's a hypothetical scenario. If you're living at the time of Muhammad, and Muhammad came to you and said, I want to marry your sister or your daughter for three days, here's some money. After three days of pleasuring myself with her, I'm going to divorce her. Would you be okay with such a person coming to marry your sister or your daughter, or even if your mother, if she's divorced or widowed, for a temporary period of time for a sum of money? The clock at two minutes, and if it starts already, we'll just calculate it. And anytime. Prophet. In Mullah. Yeah. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has already foretold that the people will come in the future and they will make lies against me. Lies and they will be in the grievous penalty of the hellfire. Now the thing is that which you are quoting the source, give me the source. Don't thumb suck from somewhere and then posing the question on TV. Give me the reference which you get that. Is it the hadith? Quote me the hadith. Quote me the book. Quote me the narrator's name. Quote me is in Mutsatil, Musnad, Munkate, Mu'allak, Mu'zal, Mursal, Madallas. Tell me which kind of hadith is that? Marfu, matlu, ma any kind of source, you give me next hadith, brother Sam. If you any and next time if you give any hadith, you tell me about muta and all that stuff, irrelevant to the antichrist. Come to the subject. When I quote you begotten, why the word begotten was taken out? So the thing is that now you are sidetracking and just you know bamboo bamboozling and subterfuging to deceiving to the people. Now you tell me what kind of references you are telling me. Don't put me in the witness box and as you as a persecutor lawyer and asking me, posing me that question. Give me the reference, give me the narrator's biography and the book name and the narrator's every detail, tiny, puny letters. This is the way we analyze the hadith. Because these are the, not the words of God, these are the words of the Prophet and it must be analyzed. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll, we'll move on. Okay, at this point, Inamula, you can ask now. You have a question you can ask. And then, uh, Sam, Shamoon, you have two minutes to respond. Okay, Unamula, you can go ahead and ask that question right now. Can you hear me, brother, or no? I, I can hear you. Okay, so, notice he kept asking me whoa, to give whoa, my whoa, whoa. source. Whoa, 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 Guys, He's guys, asking me gentlemen. To give my source. Can I give my source at least? Because he kept asking me. Give me the reference. Why don't you, let, why don't you do that in the, in the context of this next question? Go ahead and, 
Sam, or I'm sorry, Ulamula, ask the question, please, and then Sam, you can respond, including what you were just going to say, if you could. So go uh, ahead, Mr. Mutaz, you can go ahead and speak right now with your question. I, we're not hearing you. Can you hear me, brother? We can hear you yeah. now. The, the question to the Sam is still the same. I make his task easy because I don't want to sidetrack. The question is in chapter 3, verse 42, when I say that Jesus, the Prophet Muhammad says that he's Christ and the word from him, do you take exception to that verse or not? Okay, starting the, the clock question. right now at two minutes. Go ahead, Sam, you can respond. The moderator allowed me to also answer the other question because he asked me two questions. Here's Go right the ahead. Reference for Muhammad. Go right ahead. You got two minutes. Okay, well, let me. Uh, okay, anyway. Here's the co reference uh, proving that Muhammad prostituted women and called it temporary marriage. Sahil Bukhari, volume 6, book 60, number 139. Sahil Bukhari, volume 6, book 60, number 139. Also, Sahil Bukhari, volume 7, book 62, number 52. Sahil Bukhari, Volume 7, Book 62, Number 52. I want the audience to notice how he conveniently evaded answering my question because he's ashamed of this teaching of his prophet. And I want to correct you. This is relevant to the topic because these are one of the fruits that demonstrate whether Muhammad is a false prophet or not. I think you forgot when I quoted Jesus saying, you will know them by their fruits. Who? False prophets. Here is a stinking, rotten fruit of Muhammad that exposes him as a false prophet. So I am on topic. Now, coming back to your other question, you said, do I take exception to Surah 342? Yes, I do, and here's why. Muhammad denies the implication of the title Messiah. I quoted 1 John chapter 2, verses 22 to 23, 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 to 14, to show you what Christ means in reference to Jesus. Now, let me repeat that so you don't attack straw men. You've been attacking straw men left and right. When the title is applied to Christ, according to the New Testament, it is used in the sense of Jesus, who was with the Father as his word, who then became flesh. You even quoted it, Second John 7. Christ has come in the flesh. This Christ existed with God the Father before he became flesh, and then he became flesh. If Muhammad denies that the Christ became flesh thereby affirming that the Christ already existed before he became flesh, then I have a problem with Muhammad. But are you saying Muhammad agrees Jesus existed with Allah before he became flesh? If okay. so, Time's up. embrace Time. Christ as your Lord and Savior, because you're one step closer Okay, to I, 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 you got to stick with the clock. You'll have a chance to speak again. We're going to stick with this format here. Okay, now at this point, Sam, you can ask Unumula. We have two more opportunities to do this. Sam, you have a, now you can ask a question. And then once Unumula starts responding, we'll start the clock again. You have two minutes to respond. Go ahead, Sam. Ask your question at this point, please. Well, I'm going to repeat the same question and add also the other nasty fruit that I mentioned. Uh, I asked him the first time, what would he say if he lived at the time of Muhammad, and Muhammad came and said, listen, I want to marry your mother if she's widowed or divorced, or your sister or your daughter for three days, and I'll give her a garment. And after I am satisfied and pleased with her for three days, I'll divorce her. I wanted him to answer whether he'd be okay with it or not. And if not, why not? And why is he still a Muslim? Related to that is the other passage I quoted. Surah 424. What would you think of Muhammad if he came and conquered your village, killed your father, your uncle, your brothers, and then took your wife in front of you and raped her in front of you, saying, this is something permitted to me by Allah? Would okay. you be okay with it? If so, then you're more dangerous than I thought. Okay, Unumullah, that's a lot to pack into two minutes, but go ahead and start your question, your answers right now, please. Now, this is the problem, you see? If he heard me correctly, I asked him, what kind of source is this? Read me the narrators. Tell me the hadith. It is zaif, it is a mawzu. Sahih Bukhari doesn't mean that every hadith is authentic. You don't know about Islam. This is the problem. You are quoting about Nisa, you are lying. You are giving wrong interpretation. This is the problem with you, my brother. Tell me what <laughs> about everything. And you are giving me this thing and asking you, begging a question on hadith. Four system in this way of Islam. Quran, hadith, second consensus of the scholar, number four, analogical deduction. Under four criteria, we judge the hadith. I ask you, is it muttasil, musnad, munkate, mu'allak, mozal, mursal, mutallas? 
Tell me what kind of hadith you are an Arab, you tell to the people. Now I am telling you in your holy Bible, in the uh, book of Numbers, chapter 31, verse 9, where God says, kill every child, little one, infant, suckling one not to be spared, but keep your virgins alive. And so the Jewish soldier, 33,000 virgins they saved, and 33 the priest, they enjoyed and did sex with them in the name of God. 33 out 33,000, and 33 of them were enjoyed by the priest. This is the, in the whole Holy Bible. You are telling me about hadith, and I ask you, tell me what quality of that hadith is. You didn't quote, you give me the reference. I am not asking about the reference, I am asking about the narrators. If you understand what are narrators, I am broken chain. That which narrator listened, and the which uh, uh, spread it, then which again listened. So this is the thing, is that this is the answer which I am giving you right now. Thank you very much. Okay. We, uh, we're a little ahead of schedule on that one. And now, uh, Unumula, you can ask Sam a question, a brief one if we could, and then, Sam, you have two minutes to respond. Then we're going to get into our closing statements. So, so you have uh, that one last question to ask, and, Sam, then you can uh, respond with the two-minute uh, time, peri time period. The question is, again, simple. I will not sidetrack. I promise to the Christians I will not sidetrack. Question is, in Jeremiah, I quoted you, God says, Jeremiah, I knew you before you came into the world. Give me the form of Jeremiah. If Jesus is, was in the beginning, according to your John's explanation, then tell me in what form Jeremiah knew, had known by the God Almighty in your Bible. This is your question. Time is yours. Thank you. Okay, Sam, you have two minutes to respond. Jesus Christ, this guy's making it even easier for me to refute him and prove that Jesus is Lord over Muhammad. Uh, number one, Jeremiah chapter one, when God says to Jeremiah he knew him, it means that God had already decreed, ordained, determined that he would create, create Jeremiah to be his prophet. But this is a false analogy to what the Gospel of John says concerning Jesus. Notice that if you go to John chapter one, verses one to three, it does not say, in the beginning, God knew the Word who became flesh. So you're comparing apples and pineapples, showing how desperate you are to refute the clear testimony to Jesus being the eternal Word who became flesh. Let me read to you John chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, and verse 10, and verse 14, to see the difference between the language of Jeremiah chapter 1 and what John has to say about Jesus and the other New Testament writers. In the beginning was the Word. It doesn't say in the beginning God had ordained the Word or knew the Word. And the Word was with God. It doesn't say it was with God in His knowledge. And the Word was God. Can you please show me where Jeremiah 1, God says to Jeremiah, not only did I know, know you, but you were God with me in the beginning. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him, the Word, all things were made. Did you catch that, my opponent or my brother in humanity? And I pray in Jesus' name you'll be my brother in Christ and give up on your false religion. All things were made through the Word, Jesus Christ, meaning the Word actually existed with the Father before creation, and the Father used this Word to create everything that exists. Show me that in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. Show me that language. You won't find it. It's not there. You're comparing apples and pineapples. John chapter 1, verse 10. He was in the world, and though the world was made through Him, through whom? The Word. All the world was made through the Word. You know what that means? It means Jesus Christ, the Word, not only made you and me, okay. he even made Muhammad. I, I continue to apologize. We have to keep on, on track here without time. However, at this point now, each of you will have a closing statement. We'll start with Unumula. We have five minutes on the clock here. Unumula, at this point, you can make your closing statement right now. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. God bless you. And the thing is which that I'm, you know, just rehashing everything. I quoted, brother, that Antichrist versus anti Antichrist. The definition given by John is very simple and vivid. He's not playing fast and loose. He's, he tells to the people that Antichrist, the person who denied the Jesus as being a Christ, Messiah, Messiah. And Quran, the thing which Muhammad gave you to you Christians, you will never be able to repay him. He made us 1.8 billion Muslims to believe in Jesus. If he, you know, the simple thing Muhammad could have done at his time, he can ridicule, ridicule the idea of Mary that she was, uh, she produced the child without a father. This is the easiest that Muhammad can did at his time, but he didn't do that. 
He made us to believe that that is why Quran says, "Zalika min amba al ghaybi nohihi ilayka." This is the part of the tiding of the unseen which we revealing unto the apostle by inspiration. You were not with them when they cast lots, but which one, which one should be charged of taking care of Mary? You were not even with them when they disputed at the point. So Allah Bari Taala is telling everything with Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam accepting without any nip or a tot excuse. And if you remember. You know, so listen, listen to Sam, what he's telling to the people. Irrelevant thing. I quoted it in book of Numbers, chapter 31, if you remember. I quoted his Bible, the Holy Bible, which is the inspired word of God. God is inspiring, the most telling to Moses, to the Midianites, do this and do that. So, explain me. Then I asked him the question of a hadith. They give me the what kind of hadith is this? He did not even know the words of hadith. This is what I'm saying. It is called thumb sucking. It is said, thumbs up. You thumbs up it. It is very soothing. Then you just expound and articulate from your mouth. This is what he is doing all the time, everywhere. This is his habit. It is he got his this privilege and let him do do this till eternity. So the thing is that that it will not give him honey at all. No honey for him at all. So let us reason together and see. Give me the hadith. Quote me the narrator. Otherwise, shun no hadith at all. Talk on the Quran. I love to. Take it. He missed. He just mistranslated everything from the Quran, and he's telling, approving that about the sun. Absolutely, Quran denies the sun relation because it was the habit of the Jews in the idiomatic sense. It became literal. You Grecians, you Christians became literal. What was metaphorical to the Jews became literal to the Greeks. God sighed a sun. Why the word begotten taken out? My brother did not even quote that thing. Why the word begotten taken out? My brother is quoting me that. 300 years before, if you was there, I am asking you only 200 years before, if you were born, the only Bible available in English was King James Version, and the word was there, begotten, and every preacher and a hot gospeler was telling the word begotten to the world. Now you got correction. That is the Quran says. وَقَالَ تَخَذُ رَحْمَانُ وَلَدَهُ لَقَدْ جِئْتُمْ شَيْئًا إِدَّهُ تَكَادُ سَمَوَاتُ يَتَفَتَّرْنَ مِنْهُمْ مِنْهُمْ وَتَنْشَقَ الْأَرْضُ وَتَخِرُ الْجِبَالُ حَبْدَ and they say they from their from their mouth that God has begotten a son. It is that that the skies are ready to burst, and the earth is ready to split asunder, and these mountains fall down in the fallen and uttering ruin. And they say that Rahman has begotten a son. It is about begotten, the side relationship, husbandry. I hope you understand now, not the son which you are saying is a metaphorically way. So this is the thing. Muhammad is not antichrist. We got in chapter 5 verse 75, Mal Masihu ibn Maryam illa Rasul. Jesus Christ, the son of Mary, was no more than apostle of God. John says, simple test, anyone who's coming, the spirit which believes and confess Jesus is in flesh. Obviously, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu did not say that he was not flesh. And he said that when he was taken up, he's coming back in flesh too. In hadith, he's coming back in flesh before the day of the judgment. In Surah Zukhruf, chapter 43, verse number 61, Jesus Christ is the sign of the hour of the day of judgment. He is the sign, and the sign is the physical. In chapter 4, verse 159, Quran says that no one will be left in the Jews and the Christians to believe in Jesus Christ before his death. So when he will come, everyone will believe him. So we absolutely, 100%, in totality per se, we believe that Jesus is the Christ of God. Muhammad is not antichrist. This subject was not supposed to be mooted, but my brother forced me and instigated me. So we have done the subject. And he is, he is utterly helpless and failed to provide single strong evidence from the Quran. He is just jumping over there in Hadith. He did not quote the Hadith well. Thank you very much. Okay. At this point, uh, we have one last portion before we go to our next break, and that's a, a five minute closing statement uh, for you, uh, brother. Uh, Brother Sam, go ahead. You have five minutes. You go ahead and start right now with your closing statement. May the Lord Jesus Christ be exalted in what I say and enable me to speak truth without error. Uh, let me just address a few points that he raised, which he accused me, accuses me of not addressing in my rebuttal period. <clears throat> he mentions Numbers 31, 17, 18, and he misquotes it and perverts it to justify Muhammad teaching that you can rape married captive women. So not only do you rape them, you commit adultery, and also prostitute women and call it temporary marriage. So he quotes Numbers 31, 17, 18 to justify that. In a worst-case scenario, that wouldn't justify Muhammad's moral, uh, immoral acts. It would mean that the Old Testament is also immoral, right? This is what we call the two quoque fallacy. Well, what about you? You too. That doesn't get, any, uh, get us anywhere. It only shows 
a lack of logical, <clears throat> critical thinking on the part of my opponent. But if you actually read Numbers 31, 17, 18, and you read it in context, read the entire chapter, and read Numbers 25, which is also part of the context, you'll see why God spared the virgins. Numbers 25 and 31 shows us that the Moabites and the Midianite women committed sexual immorality with the Israelite men, enticing them through this sexual immorality to worship Baal. So what God was saying is, destroy all who are responsible, but spare the young girls who did not share in the sin of this immoral act. By the way, can you guys hear me? Hello? Yes. Okay, because it stopped all of a sudden. I'm, I'm sorry. Maybe you can give me 10 seconds because it went silent. Let me repeat that last part again. Numbers 25 and 31 shows that the reason why God spared the virgins is because they were not responsible or guilty in enticing the Israelites to worship the false god Baal through their sexual and moral acts with them. So what, what my opponent did, he took an act proving the mercy of God on virgins who were spared because they were not guilty of the sin and therefore God didn't punish them and perverted it to his own destruction. Titus 1.15 speaks to my opponent tonight. It says, To the pure, all things are pure, but to the corrupt and unbelieving, nothing is pure, because their very minds and consciences are corrupt. And that speaks to my opponent because of his perverted reading of the Bible, but I pray in Jesus' name he will save him out of his darkness and bring him into the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ, his only hope of salvation. Now, with that said, let me just summarize some of the points of the debate. According to the scriptures, an antichrist is one who denies that, the fa that God is the Father and Jesus is his Son. 1 John chapter 2, verses 22 to 23. My opponent kept distorting the beliefs of the Jews and saying that what was believed by the Jews to be an idiomatic expression ended up being taken literally by them. I challenged him, and I will challenge him to produce the documentation proving that at the time of Muhammad, Jews and Christians thought to be children of God meant through sexual intercourse, that God had sex with a consort to sire them. That is a lie. They did not believe that. Jews and Christians believe that God is a spiritual being and therefore a spiritual father to them, no more, no less. And yet the Quran says to the Jews and Christians, you are not the children of God even in that sense. Therefore, the judgment of 1 John 2, 22, 23 remains. Muhammad denied that God is a father in any sense denied that Jesus is the Son of God, denied anyone was the Son of God, whether Adam or Israel or David. And so therefore, according to 1 John 2, 23 Muhammad is an antichrist condemned by the teachings of the New Testament. My opponent must simply accept the truth of the matter. Another criterion given by the Lord Jesus Christ, to know a false prophet when he arises. He says in Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 and 16 and verse 20, Matthew 7, verses 15 and 16 and verse 20, you will know them by their fruit. Their evil fruits will be a testimony that they are false prophets. I gave two examples of rotten fruits coming from Muhammad. My opponent kept saying, well, I didn't quote my sources. Yes, I did. I quoted Sahil Bukhari, deemed to be in the most authentic book next to the book of Muhammad, or what Muslims would call the book of Allah, the Quran. Muslim scholars unanimously agree that every single narration of Bukhari is authentic without any dispute. The fact that he had to call it into question demonstrates he has no response, so in desperation he had to attack his own sources. Well, thank you for doing that because you proved my case that according to your most authentic sources, Muhammad's fruit were vile and nasty, therefore he's a false prophet. He prostituted women in the name of temporary marriage, and he allowed his thugs to rape captive women who were still married. So not only did he give them permission to rape them, he also gave them permission to rape them if they were married, thereby committing adultery. Okay, He's thank you, Sam. Thank you, Sam. Uh, never a loss of passion on this program, I will say. We're going to go to a break here. I will mention three, other, three uh, uh, other announcements that were mentioned earlier. Uh, I'll just start here. The Aramaic Revival with Father Estefanos Isa on Thursday and Friday. May 19th and 20th, that's next weekend. Uh, that will be at 8 p.m. at um, Warren Community Church in Rye, on Ryan Road in Warren, so stay tuned for that. On a, any of these announcements, by the way, you can always call us at 248-416-1300 for more information, or go to our website, which is www.abnsat.com, and you might be watching us on the, on the website right now.
Another announcement coming up, the Detroit for Christ Revival with Father Makari Yunan is on Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday, June 16th, 18th, and 19th at 8 p.m. at Zion Christian Church. These are programs that are coming up not too far away. We're already uh, we're in the middle of May here, and uh, we have uh, June isn't that far away. So uh, the war warmer weather is here, and things are happening, so a lot of things going on. And lastly, and also in June, the Jesus of Muhammad Marathon will be going on and we'll be looking forward to having that as well for a week long for 21 guests or so in the studio as well as through Skype. We're going to go to a 90 second break here trying to stay on schedule. Again, we will be going the full 90 minutes. We'll go to about, let's say, 10 before the hour. So come back with us at 90 seconds after we come back from this break. Stay with us as we continue our program tonight, Debate Night, here on ABNSAT.com. Welcome back. We're in the last uh, segment here of our program tonight on Debate Night. Again, the topic is, is Muhammad a true prophet of, or I'm sorry, is Muhammad a true prophet or the Antichrist? We have callers. We are uh, ready to take those callers right now. We uh, trust that you are going to ask a question that's on topic. We're going to ask you to be brief. We're going to ask you also to turn your audio down if you haven't done so already. And we're going to have Brother Rahil. Uh, go ahead, and you can start talking, and you can tell us your question, and who is it directed to, sir? Uh, thank you, brother, uh, and uh, God bless you, brother Sam. You are doing a great job. I want to share my testimony. First, I was a Christian, and uh, I listened to the uh, debates of brother Zakir and I, and I, then I was thought I should be become a Muslim. But, but when I listened to my brother Sam Shamon and David Wood, then I changed my opinion about Islam because Islam is not a religion of peace and the Muhammad is not a Brother Rahil, true prophet. What is your question? My question, I want to, uh, my question is uh, how Brother Inamullah says that the Muhammad is a prophet and the, the Quran says in Surah al tawbah verse number 9, uh, uh, Surah 9, verse number 29, fight those who not believe on Allah, who not believe on the Messenger who not believe on the prophet who not believe on the Islam and on the Quran, and if they pay jizya, then leave them. Okay, but we I live in Pakistan, a Muslim country. The Muslim terrorists and Muslim mullahs in our area say us, if you want to live here, pay us the jizya. 
and they threaten us. They say that you cannot spread your the gospel. So the, the Islam, the Muhammad spread the Islam in on the terrorism, on the fighting. But the Jesus Christ says, Brother Rahe, Brother Rahe, we have to have your question, sir. Please. Okay. The, my question is, if uh, to Brother Inamullah, we're ready. Uh, Inamullah, he quoting to the uh, Brother Sam Channel, where in the Bible says uh, that uh, these things, these things. I have a question for you, him. Show me where is the uh, word Tawheed in the Quran. I challenge him and let, show me. Let him answer. Ra Brother Inumola, you, you can respond, please. Uh, Mr. Moderator, he posed two questions. Which question should I respond? Both of them or one or second one? Which one? Go ahead. Try with both. Okay, my brother quoted in the Surah Tawbah, chapter 9, verse number 29. It is about Khulfa Rashidin, my friend. You reverted to back. It is talking about, about the Khalifas. When they ruled some nation, they gave three options. Either become Muslim or give jizya, tax, or come to the ground to fight. This is every journal, when he conquers any land, he gives some kind of criteria. So in Islam, the Khulfa Rashidin and Jews and everyone lived under the full pleasure of Muslims. So this is what 929 is telling. Read the explanation about that. My brother Sam quoted, this was all the time I heard him, but this is the, not the subject for eternity. It is about, now which Muslim state got these Khalifa? No one. So in which Muslim is killing you right, right now? Tell me. So this is the ayah reserved for that time in the Khalifa's time, and every general has a right to do and lay down his own rules. So this rule was given to go from God. Read your own Bible. What happened in your Bible in Luke chapter 22, verse number 43 or 33, where Jesus says that to, to his disciples that get, get sword. What sword? Why he needs sword? Did Jesus Christ to retaliate or to peel off the apples? What? So it is the self-defense. This is a system laid to Jesus, to the Moses, and every law has a tendency to change the character of the people. And the second question, uh, what, uh, okay, what was the question? On. We're, we're going to just make it one question because we want to maintain our time frame here and we got other people. Uh, Brother Sam, would you like to respond at all to that and be brief if you could? Sorted the historical context of Surah 929 and perverted Luke 22, 35, 38. Let me address Luke 22, 35, 38. He's comparing apples and pineapples. What Jesus Christ is telling the disciples is that because Christ will be taken away to be crucified, they have to now defend their lives and protect themselves. The sword that Jesus was talking about, go back and look at the original language, is a dagger that you carry in your pouch. It's a dagger that people would carry so that they would protect themselves from being attacked by highway bandits. Jesus was not telling them, take this sword and go spread the rule of Christianity and give people three choices, accept Jesus, Pay a sum of money so you can feel humiliated or we kill you. So this is a perversion of Jesus' words in order to make Jesus comparable to Muhammad. So that, that error has been refuted. Now as far as Surah 929 is concerned, here Muhammad has taken the entire Hejaz, all of Arabia, and now is giving his, his <clears throat> uh, Muslim warriors final marching orders. He's telling them, spread Islam militarily, geographically, politically. Go to lands who have never heard of you, who have never bothered you, who have never attacked you, and tell them, become Muslim, and in the case they're Jewish and Christian lands, tell them they can pay the jizya and retain their religious identity. If not, we fight, and to the victor goes the spoils. What he doesn't tell you is that Sir 929 says, those Jews and Christians who agreed to pay the jizya do so as a sign of humiliation. It says they pay the jizya to feel themselves humiliated, subdued, disgraced, that's the words of Ibn Kathir. You will never find such evil in humane teachings in the New Testament. You find it in Muhammad, which is another rotten fruit of Muhammad, proving he's a false prophet, and Jesus Christ is Lord over him. Okay, great. Thank you, Sam. Now, Layla, you're up next. You have one question. Please be brief, and go ahead and say it now and tell us who it's directed to. Please, thank you. Layla? Layla, are you there? Okay, Layla, uh, if you're not there, we'll move on to the next question, next uh, caller. Uh, if it's not Layla, is it Vincent? Is anyone uh, out there? 
Vincent? Yes. Uh, who is it now? This is Vincent. Vincent, okay, sir, tell us your question. Who is it directed to? Please be brief. Okay, well, my question is uh, directed to Anamala. Okay. Um, and first of all, thank you, Sam, for doing a wonderful job and uh, being so patient with Anamala. Okay, uh, Anamala, you have, uh, brother, you have been using the Bible as your source of arguments for the most of the time. The Bible presents a plan for human salvation through the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Now, in case of Adam, the God, he provides the salvation to Adam and Eve by the sacrifice of animal blood. In case of Noah, God, God assured that Noah and his family will be saved from the flood. But Muhammad in Quran, he suggests that his son died, so that as if there was a flaw in God's plan of salvation. Similarly, when it comes to Jesus and his plan of salvation, Christ was crucified, whereas Muhammad in Quran, he clearly um, he denies that. So how come, on one hand, you say that Muhammad, he actually... Um, he is not an antichrist, and at the same time, he is going completely against the plan of salvation which Christ brought for the humanity. Okay. Thank you for listening to my question. Thank you. Unumalo, your response, please. Yes, let me correct my brother. The idea of salvation which he is propounding from is not to be found in the Bible. It is the creation of the Saint Paul. What Jesus says, quote me Jesus. Don't quote me, Peter, but go on with Galatians, Galatians, what Jesus is in Matthew, in chapter 5, verse number 17, do not think that I come to destroy the laws of the prophets. I do not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Till the heavens and the earth shall pass away, one jot, in the Hebrew word, one jot, shall in no means pass away from the law until all be fulfilled. So whosoever breaks the least commandment and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Was he bluffing to the Jews? He said that anyone who breaks and anyone who fulfills shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. The salvation which you are talking about is something else. Read Matthew, brother Sam, read Matthew chapter 18 and my questioner, dear questioner, that Jesus says, his disciples came to Jesus and said, Master, who is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus says, bring that little child, bring it to me. Be humble like this little child. These are the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus says, you kill prophets from righteous Abel to Zechariah. Sorry, the son of Zechariah. Righteous means sinless in your Bible. Was Jesus bluffing to the people? Why is he comparing man to the Roman Catholic says that, that if a child dies, he's going to limbo. The hell of the Roman Catholics. So the thing is that Jesus says, be humble like this little child or these little children. Why he's telling to children? Because child is innocent. If he's getting this uh, original sin idea, which you're telling, original sin is not to be found anywhere in the Bible. In the concocted evidence which you are telling, you will find about Paul is telling everything which is on the loggerhead is between, not between Islam and Jesus, is between Islam and St. Paul, which was the self-elected disciple. So this is the thing which I'm telling you, that nowhere salvation comes from, from the blood. God says in the book of Isaiah, I forgive sins for my own sake and I, then I don't remember. God says, I do not remember, and that day after tomorrow, he says, bring that sin. I want to redeem it. I want to punish you. I want to rectify you. I want to reprimand you. God didn't say that. God says, I forgive sins for my own sake. Now you tell me that God is lying or what he was bluffing or subterfuging to the people. Thank you very much. Brother Sam, you have an opportunity to respond to that. Uh, it's unbelievable how he can distort the Bible in my presence and think he can get away, he can get away with it, which he won't by the grace of God. <clears throat> he just quoted Isaiah 43:25, saying that God forgives for his own sake. He forgets to read Isaiah in context. The reason why God can forgive for his own sake, because in Isaiah chapter 53, verses 1 to 12, God will send forth his servant, which the New Testament identifies as Jesus, to die as a sin offering for the sins of his people. Let me just read Isaiah 53, verse 10. Yet it was Yahweh's will to crush him, the servant, and cause him to suffer. And though Yahweh makes his life an offering for sin, 
So Isaiah is in perfect agreement with Paul and Jesus, disagreeing with Muhammad, again proving Muhammad is a false prophet. Thank you for helping me win this debate for the glory of Jesus. He says, show me Jesus where he says his blood is necessary. My pleasure. Mark chapter 10, verse 45. For even, this is Jesus speaking, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So Jesus says his life will be forfeited to ransom, to redeem, to save many. Matthew 26, 26 to 29. But for the sake of time, I'll read 27 to 28. Then he took a cup. This is Matthew 26, 27 to, to 28. Then he took a cup, and we had, when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, drink, of, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. So Jesus, with Isaiah, agrees perfectly with Paul, disagreeing with Muhammad, proving Muhammad is a false prophet. Luke 24, 44 to 47. Jesus again. Luke 24, 44 to 47. But for the sake of time, I'll read 46 and 47. Jesus told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer, rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name, Jesus' name, to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Ironically, the most shocking thing about this is he quotes the passage where Jesus says, bring the children to me. In other words, you have to be like a child to enter the kingdom. Did you forget what Jesus said? Bring the children to me. See, you forgot the part where he says, me. Yes, you must be a child when you come to Christ. Come to Christ as a child. He will bless you and save you. So even that passage refutes you, proving once again salvation is coming to Christ like a child, showing Muhammad is a false prophet. Thank you for demonstrating over and over again Muhammad is a false prophet. Jesus Christ is Lord. Okay, thank you, Brother Sam. We probably can sneak one more caller in, and uh, I think we have another, at least one more caller on the line. We're just going to ask whoever it is, if it's Manu, uh, whoever it might be, please be brief. Please, yes. one question, and we are ready right now. What is your question? Who's it directed to? This question is for Sam. My question is that, you hear me? Yes, please speak. Okay. Yes, yes, thank you. The brief question is that since John 544, Jesus himself refers to God as the one and only God, and the Trinitarian viewpoint that Sam is part of goes against this, is Sam willing to condemn other Christian denominations that they're Unitarians, such as Messianic Jews, such as Mormons, and others? Is he willing to also use his same logic and condemn them that they are Antichrist just to the dimension of the sonship of Jesus, not to the uh, fruits and so forth? Thank you. Okay. Okay, Brother Sam, your, your response to that. You made it too easy for me. I was hoping for a tougher question from you, and may the Lord Jesus save you out of Islam. Uh, my answer to you is I condemn any teaching and anyone who embraces a teaching contrary to the Bible. Unitarians deny the deity of Christ because they cite scriptures out of context just like you did. You quoted John 5:44, the very same gospel that start off by telling us that Jesus is the Word who existed with the Father before creation as God, and is the word that the Father used to create everything else. So let's ignore John chapter 1. Let's ignore what John chapter 5, verses 16 to 29 says about the deity of Christ, his essential equality with the Father. Let's ignore what John chapter 10 says, John chapter 11, John chapter 14. And let's ignore John 20, 28, when Thomas says to Jesus, says, Thomas answered and said to him, directing it to him, my Lord and my God, and Jesus blessing that confession, not rebuking him. Let's ignore all those verses which clearly demonstrate that Jesus is just as much as, as God as the Father is, because he's one with the Father in essence, and focus on John 5.44. And let's ignore John 5.43, which again proves that Muhammad is an antichrist who stands condemned. John 5.43, which you did not quote. I have come in my Father's name. Notice Jesus says God is my Father. Your prophet said Allah is not the Father of Jesus. So the very context of John 5 condemns Muhammad as an antichrist, and to answer your question, anyone who denies what the Bible teaches in context is not a true Christian. And if anyone denies the Trinity, the Father of God, the divine assumption of Christ, then he too is an antichrist. And I pray he repents like you repent, because Jesus Christ is your only hope. And it's not the Jesus of the Quran, it's the Jesus of the New Testament, who's the Christ of history, your God and Savior. Accept him now, because when he comes, you'll bow the knee, but it'll be too late for you.
Okay, uh, un, Brother uh, Mumtaz, you may respond to that, and uh, we'll be real, real close to the end of the show here. So go right ahead and do that if you could. Brother Sam, but decide is the topic is false prophet or antichrist. Sometimes you say false prophet, sometimes you're antichrist. Stick on the subject, prove to the contrary that Jesus is not antichrist. Jesus is not Christ, mentioned Christ in the Bible, uh, sorry, in the Quran. Now, coming back to the brother's question, brother is right. Tell to the Trinitarians that you are not Christians, sorry, Unitarians. You know, brother Sam, that Unitarians were the beginners people with the, when they received the message. Unitarians. You talking about Trinity, you said ignore everything, ignore this, ignore that, ignore this. <laughs> why ignore this? Tell me why Trinity verse was removed from your Bible if Trinity was with Jesus came to preach. You remember in John, in, in, in John was John the Baptist telling in the Bible, in Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, he says that the mighty is coming after me, and he will baptize you in the name of fire and Holy Spirit. Nowhere in the Bible Jesus ever baptizes anyone with fire and Holy Spirit, and these are two things in it, not three. Your former formula is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, which the verse of first epistle of John chapter 5, verse 7, I'm telling to the questioner, brother, listen to me. In RSV, this verse is taken out as a fabrication. Why it is taken out? Because you are absolutely right. Unitarians, Jesus was considered to be a prophet, righteous prophet, not the something uh, uh, connection to the God. If the brother Sam is begging to the question, trying to prove from Jesus' mouth. He says that Jesus says, my father. He says, Jesus says, your father, your father, my father, your father, my father, including Judas, everyone. And they all are in one. In John chapter 17, verse 22, we all are one. So what do you mean by one? In totem pole, as to worship all together as one? No. So Jesus refers everyone that your father, O oh, our father, hallowed be thy name. Who is our father? So he's, he, he was the father of everybody. This is not even that he's something Jesus got some supernatural powers, only that he is directly connected to that God as being that he is only the father. So the question is still is there that Trinitari, Trinitarians, they came after 325 AD by Constantine in the Constantinople in Council of Nicaea, where democratically by the show of hands, they anointed Jesus as God. And rest of them, they persecute by, by the deity name of Jesus. The deity, by the name, the deity of Jesus Christ, they persecute the early Christians. Read the history, friends and foes alike. Everyone will tell you the high, the, the biggest massacre by the deity of them, from the deity of Jesus Christ, that calling him God, the highest massacre was done by crusaders. Crusaders, Christian crusaders. Anyone who doesn't believe that Jesus is in the part of Trinity, kill him, finish him. This is what the, you people spread, the pioneers, the Gracians, the pioneer message of the Trinitarians. But in actual, the real founders of Christians were, the Christ said, you are not of me who does not take his cross and follow me. That cross was one God and Jesus is messenger of that God. Okay. Not that he was the something supernatural of God. So this okay. is the response to the question. Okay. Brother um, uh, Mumtaz, thank you so much. Uh, Brother Sam, thank you as well. And all of you who have called and all of you that have watched and all of you have uh, been with us tonight in this program, we will be finishing up the program now. Uh, the, as, uh, as we often say around here, the debate, even though the show is over, the debate continues. Uh, we are grateful for this opportunity to bring this program to you tonight here on ABN, uh, Aramaic Broadcasting Network. We're going to sign off for tonight. Uh, please tune in next time. And, and also always know that you can always call us here at the ministry at 248-416-1300, as well as check out our uh, website anytime at www.abnsat.com. If you have any further questions, comments, or anything you'd like to share with us, please feel free to do that. We are a uh, ministry-supported uh, uh we're a, a, a um, visual, uh, I what I'm trying to say, uh, we are supported by our, our viewers, if I can spit it out here, uh, and we do appreciate all of you who have been calling in and supporting us and praying for us. We're going to sign off. We, God bless you for being on this program tonight, for Brother Sam and for uh, Brother uh, Mumtaz so much. Uh, great, we're so grateful for your being on the program tonight. Continue to uh, uh, stay tuned to our further programs. This is Brother Chris, and we're going to sign off for tonight. Have a wonderful evening, and see you next time on Debate Night.